Did you know that patients with giant cell arteritis no longer need to rely on high-dose prednisone as the only treatment option? Exciting new approaches are emerging that reduce steroid exposure while still effectively managing giant cell arteritis, or GCA. I've had the privilege of learning about these groundbreaking advancements directly from world-renowned experts at Harvard Medical School. And today, I'll share what you need to know to manage GCA more effectively and safely. Hi, I'm Dr. Megan, your prednisone pharmacist. I'm a board-certified doctor of pharmacy and third-generation pharmacist. Giant cell arteritis, or GCA, is a serious autoimmune condition that can cause headaches, jaw pain, visual disturbances, and even blindness if left untreated. While high-dose prednisone has been the traditional treatment, it's associated with significant side effects like weight gain, diabetes, osteoporosis, infections, mood changes, up to 150 more side effects than that. That's why researchers are exploring alternatives to steroids to reduce steroid exposure while still keeping inflammation under control. In this video, I'm going to cover a new combination therapy that might help, how that compares with standard high-dose prednisone, and a breakthrough therapy with a non-steroid alternative that's showing incredible promise. Let's dive in. Giant cell arteritis is also often called temporal arteritis because it can affect these arteries here on the side of the head. It's an inflammatory condition affecting these blood vessels, often in the head and the neck, possibly the shoulders. Common symptoms include persistent headaches, scalp tenderness, jaw pain when chewing, and vision problems such as double vision or sudden blindness. Because of the risk for vision loss, GCA is treated aggressively with steroids to reduce the inflammation quickly. However, long-term high doses can lead to serious complications of prednisone use, which is where the alternative therapies come in. That's why they're doing this research. Recent research from Spain has shown that a combination therapy using intravenous methylprednisolone, similar to prednisone, methotrexate, and low-dose prednisone is just as effective as the standard high-dose prednisone regimen, but with fewer side effects. So here's the study design. 151 patients with newly diagnosed giant cell arteritis were studied. Group one had standard of care with the high-dose oral prednisone, from 40 to 60 milligrams per day, tapered slowly over several months. Group two had an alternative regimen combining three pulses of intravenous or IV methylprednisolone. Sometimes it's, in the United States, it's called IV medrol. They were given somewhere between 125 and 500 milligrams per day. They were also later given low-dose prednisone from 20 to 30 milligrams per day and methotrexate for maintenance. So those last two are oral pills. The results are both groups achieved remission within four weeks. Patients on the alternative regimen reduced their prednisone dose to less than or equal to five milligrams a day, much faster than those on the standard high-dose prednisone. It was 13.9 weeks versus 56.6 weeks. The alternative group had fewer steroid-related complications of 20% in that group versus 37% in the standard high-dose prednisone group. Essentially what they did is instead of starting out high and kind of staying high and slowly tapering down over time, they started out super high, like off the charts high with that IV medrol of 500 milligrams a day for three days and then going down to prednisone. So even though this one was super high, it eventually got you down faster as opposed to this one that started out high and stayed high for a long time. Essentially, if you stayed on 60 or 50 milligrams of prednisone for three weeks, you would get there to that same dose equivalent of the Medrol 1500 milligrams. You were going to get there eventually. You're going to be exposed to that much steroid eventually. It's just, is there an advantage to a huge dose and then going down more quickly as opposed to staying high and slowly going down? This showed that that super high dose of IV was more effective. And this is especially promising for people who experience awful side effects to prednisone, such as those who have a family history of osteoporosis or diabetes or high blood pressure. And if you're taking prednisone, managing side effects is crucial. 
That's exactly why I created the prednisone checklist. It goes through the top mistakes people are making while taking prednisone and then the evidence-based tips of exactly what you can do to avoid making those mistakes. You can click the link below to download it now. It's a free PDF. Just click the link below and you can download it, print it off, share it with your doctor, get the help you need to manage those side effects and avoid those mistakes. So now let's talk about this steroid-free option, a newer drug called upatacidinib which in the United States is marketed as Renvoke, and that's what I'm gonna call it from now on because it's really hard to say upatacidinib over and over. This medication is a Janus Kinase or JK inhibitor. It's an oral medication, a pill, and it targets specific pathways that drive inflammation in GCA, offering a more precise approach as opposed to steroids, which are kind of just like a gunshot going everywhere in your whole body. It's more like a shotgun where there's little pellets going your entire body. Your whole body's getting damaged, even though you really only need the steroid help here, right? So this phase three trial, that's the highest level before a drug gets FDA approved for a condition. This is what they did. They had 209 patients with giant cell arteritis in the study. Group one received Renvoke, 15 milligrams a day. Group two received a placebo with an extended steroid taper. So they were on prednisone and something that looked like Renvoke. So results at weeks 12 to 52. So after three months to a year. 46.4% of people on Renvoke achieved remission without needing rescue steroids. In comparison, only 29% of people in the placebo group achieved remission. So almost one-fifth more people experienced remission on Renvoke than on the placebo. Renvoke offers a potential alternative treatment for patients who want to avoid steroids or are experiencing significant side effects. And it's a newer option, results are still coming out. It's not even FDA approved for this just yet, but it probably will be any day. And while combination therapies, these new exciting results coming out with JAK inhibitors and things like that, they're great advancements. Prednisone doesn't work equally well for everyone with GCA especially women. I recently learned from a Harvard Medical School professor that women with GCA and the related disease, polymyalgia rheumatica, face unique challenges with prednisone and it's not always the best option for them. He specifically said, prednisone fails women with GCA. To learn why prednisone fails women with GCA, click on the card or the link to the next video. Prednisone fails women with GCA, giant cell arteritis and PMR. I'll share what I discovered from this Harvard expert and how this impacts your treatment choices. If you're finding this video helpful, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel for more tips about GCA, but click over to watch this video now of why prednisone is failing women with GCA. Let's explore why prednisone might not be the best fit for people with GCA. Click now.